177, or you can look on the right-hand side of your bulletin. I've got it back in the bulletin again. He is Lord. We're going to sing it twice. 177. Let us stand. Thank you. Appreciate that. I want to welcome y'all out this morning. Those of you that's here, it's good to have you out uh, this morning with us. Uh, in the way of announcements this morning, we have uh, the uh, regular worship service, Bible study uh, 13th at 6.30, choir, choir practice after. Uh, that, uh, the youth are going to go to uh, Peacock Pottery January the 24th after church. Uh, Four in Christ will be here on January the 30th uh, at 6 p.m. and a dinner afterwards. Uh, the uh, said, lady, get your cooking pots out and make sure we got you know, plenty to eat. We usually have a good crowd to that, as David said. Uh, February the 13th, uh, Valentine's Supper for the women. Uh, the men usually charge $20 per couple uh, if you can. Uh, single ladies are free. The men will pay for that. If for some reason you can't pay it, some of us will step up. Don't worry about it. But we do need to know an idea how many is going to be there so we know how many to plan for. Uh, the uh, going to have barbecue chicken instead of steaks this year, I understand. Did I cover it? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let David or Joe... Let Joe or David, let them know if, you, if you're going to be able to come, uh, I guess is the way to put that. Yeah, we and, need a good count, so yeah. we know, make sure we got enough. Right, so nobody don't come up hungry. Uh, any other announcements? <clears throat> okay. If not, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this privilege to be in your house, to come together together to worship you, Lord, and to sing praises to your holy name. Father, we just ask a blessing upon, upon all these that have come out this morning. 
We pray that each one would receive some message, that each heart would be touched in some way from songs or words or something said. Uh, and Lord, we pray for those that are not here this morning, that they're providentially hindered. We pray that uh, they're not sick, that uh, for whatever reason, but they're out, but that they'll be with us again next Sunday. We ask now that you go with us throughout the remainder of this service. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Our opening hymn this morning is number 370. 370, Victory in Jesus. David, are some of these in the back? I don't know. I didn't know whether you wanted them put out or not, is what I was asking. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I just saw it for the first time. <laughs> uh, you and don't... Miss Brenda brought them in. And so. they are some in the back. There are some okay, there's the some of these in the back for the four in Christ. Those of you that can put them in the storefront or something somewhere, pick, them, pick up one and uh, do that with it to get the advertisement out. I sent an email out to the local churches. I don't know whether it'll do any good or not, but I sent that out yesterday to them. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Oh 
going down now we'll take a moment or two and look at our prayer list um, I was told that this morning at the Sunday school service that Janie Wadford she's at home and doing butter so we're going to take her off the prayer list although still remembering her prayers we went by and visited her this week uh, Linda Farmer I uh, was doing butter we took her name off we'll take her name off the Bill and uh, Renee McMillan were asked to remove those Rod Dunham he is and Henry Mills is back with us, so we took his name off, but we want to put Henry Mills' brother. He passed away yesterday, or last night, last night, uh, Mac Mills. So keep Henry's family in our prayers this morning. This, uh, remember them and uh, for their needs. Uh, also this morning, we want to add Tammy Bishop back to the prayer list and the Ray Johnson family. You don't add Tammy Bishop. That's her mom that is on the prayer list. Oh, Okay. All right, I mis got misunderstood that at Sunday school. I sit over on the side there, so sometimes I, I don't hear all I need to hear. Yeah, she's going to start a new chemo program in, in about 10 days. Okay, well, that's why I put her back on the prayer list then. She's going to no, start. that's her mom, though. Okay, what's her name? Virginia Roberts. She's on there. She's on there, okay. All right. All right, very good. Uh, Katie, so... Uh, Carol, I never did, Carol, Carol, Carol or Carol? It was Minnie Bell that told you. This no, no, uh, Futural. This Winnie Bell's brother-in-law. Winnie Bell's brother-in-law. Not, not Katie's. Carol. Okay, well, who did Katie tell us yesterday? Katie, didn't you say somebody yesterday? Okay, I thought we were over there, bit wrote something down at Katie's. That was at Winnie Bell's. That was at Winnie Bell's. <laughs> All right, getting old. I know we were visiting several yesterday. That's why I, I depend on my wife to keep, keep up with this thing. Because when I get to the house and I get ready to type it, first thing you hear me holler is, Bet, where are you at? Come here. <laughs> and she helps me with it. Okay, Winnie Bell's then. Uh, few trail we needed to add to our prayer list. Are there others this morning that we have updates on or need to add? I know we were talking about Katie's brother in Texas and all. 
Yeah, Jonathan, and we're talking about the rest of the family, and somehow I crossed the two over yesterday. <laughs> That's what happens when you get 71 years old. How about others? No others? Okay, then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we pray for the needs that, are, that we lifted up here. We pray for the families that have lost loved ones, Lord. We pray that you would comfort them and, and, and be with them at this hour, uh, at this hour in need in their life, uh, that you would comfort them in the way, Lord, that you know that they need to be comforted. Lord, we pray not only for those on our prayer list that have lost loved ones, but we pray for those that, are, that have various needs. We pray for the families of the loved ones that have needs as well, Lord, for they too have needs. We lift them up. Father, we also pray this morning for those that are homebound. We pray for our armed services. We pray for the government, Lord. Uh, we pray for our schools, Lord, as, we cont as they continue to strip, strip you from the, from the curriculum, Lord. I don't know how they think we're going to improve a country, Lord, without you. Uh, we pray for Farwell High School. I have just t was told that they've taken their Bible study class out of high school now, uh, that they're going to remove it, Lord. Uh, Lord, we just need your help. Uh, this country needs your help. The leaders of this country need your, need your intervention in somehow, Father. Uh, you need for us to speak out, Lord, and, and to intervene in what's going on. Just give us the courage and the wisdom to do this. We pray, Lord, for the terrorists, for the tragedies, tragedies that are in our nation. Uh, I could spend, we could spend hours on our knees, Lord, praying for the needs that are there, uh, that exist today. So, Lord, we just come to you this morning and we pray for your intervention. We pray that you would use us, those that would allow you to use them, that you would use us, Lord, in a way that you would see fit to use us to help improve things in the lives of individuals as well as our nation. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. We live in a, a world that wants God out of everything and thinks that people are going to be good more along their own. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Uh, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Our opening hymn this morning is 370. I done done that one. I done done all that. I done done the choir. I get emotional and I get tangled up sometimes where I'm at up here now. Uh, so many things on my mind is cluttered with them, of the, of the church, of the world, of the country, and <coughs> of, of, when I say the church, I mean the people. I don't mean this building. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the sermon. Ushers, come forward. <coughs> we got a church that's gone to sleep. Let's just put it that way, and it befuddles me.
Well, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of gathering in your house today, Lord. We thank you that we have a privilege to give back a portion of what you have given us. Help us, Lord, to be loving, giving people. And as we spread this money around the world, Lord, and in our own community, may it reach people that need to hear the gospel. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, T.J. Wallago said they took Bible study out of school at Farmville this week. So uh, he's got to reline all of his classes because he was taking it. How do people think you're going to have good people if you don't have anybody teaching morals in this country anymore? The children have no moral footing anymore. All they got is the garbage on television and radios and computer crap. It's going to hell in a handbasket. Pardon the expression. But that's where it's at. And I don't know what we do, but we need to do something and we're doing nothing. 496. Lord, I want to be a Christian. 
slide. <coughs> well, that thing just don't want to stay on there. Luke three fifteen seventeen. The people were waiting expectantly and were wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His wintering forks in his hand to clear the threshing floor, destroy the stalks that have no grain. He's, a hand, he's already his wintering forks in his hand. The stalks that have no grain will be destroyed. And to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up that chaff. The lost, those who've no works, those who've no grain, those who don't serve God. Burn them up with unquenchable fire. Can't get much plainer than that. John spells it out. You go on down to Luke 3, 21, 22, and when the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too, and he was praying, and heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, with whom I am well pleased. And now I want to move to Acts 14, 17. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the Lord of, word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. When they arrived, they prayed with them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon them, any of them. They'd simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. The Word of God for the people of God. God. I got a question for you this morning. Don't raise your hand. Don't embarrass nobody. Do you have the Holy Spirit? <laughs> 
Do you have God's Holy Spirit living within you? Do you have the Spirit of God living within you? I'm not asking if you're a church member. I'm not asking if you've been baptized. I want to know, I want you to answer that question personally. Have I got God's Spirit living within me? We talked of Epiphany last Sunday when Jesus was recognized by the world as something special. But not as Jesus Christ, just as a king, a worldly leader. We've talked about Paul, when Paul, at least in Bible study, we talked about how Paul brings Epiphany, who Jesus is, to the church. Paul tells the secular world at that time. He begins to tell the secular world, yes, you and me, who Jesus of Nazareth really is and was. Paul preached that what Jesus requires of us, if we are his, if we have the Holy Spirit, Paul preached that what Jesus requires of us is to sacrifice. We think once we become Christians, we don't sacrifice no more. We got it made. We're going to heaven. What what do we got to worry about? Let's sit back and ride the joy wagon right on in. To follow Jesus Christ means to sacrifice. It means to give up things that we personally may want. It means we give up things we may personally want to do, places we may personally want to go. To follow Jesus means we're willing to sacrifice to help others see the need for Him. When you, the word sacrifice means to put, it means to, to no longer put self first. To sacrifice means to no longer put self first, what you want, what you desire, what you need. This is what following Jesus means. And the importance of this, you've got to know Jesus. You cannot love the way Jesus asks you to love unless you know Jesus. And you cannot know Jesus unless you have prayed and received God's Holy Spirit. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, then you don't know God. You don't know Jesus. You know of Him. But you don't know Him. Personally. John Wesley at Aldersgate, and I could tell you the story how he came to America and he failed miserably as a missionary. Uh, he was failing in his ministry. Uh, John Wesley wanted to serve God, but he was lacking one thing. He didn't have that Holy Spirit. He watched a group of people of another faith, the name of Slips, and on the way over, and he realized that they had something he didn't have. He came to America, he failed miserably, he went back to England, you might say, with his tail between his legs. In fact, some say he had, to, he had to leave the country. He had some problems. And at Alder's Gate, he came to realize that he said, I felt my heart strangely warmed. He finally had come to the realization that he needed to let God, God's Spirit come and live within him. All of us, like Wesley, if you look into his life history, have had ugly things in our life. We've had hidden th- some hidden, some not. Some we want to keep hidden. Luke 17, For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the opening. Sadly, the day is going to come when I stand before Jesus, even though I'm saved and have His Holy Spirit, everything I've ever done is going to be made known. <laughs> it ain't going to be a pretty picture. But to those of us that are saved, we're going to know we're forgiven. we washed in the blood. We've got the Spirit of God. We lose sight sometimes that not only are the lost going to be judged and sent to hell, we're going to be judged as well. We're going to all stand before the judgment seat. And there's nothing going to be hidden. Not anything. 
the book's going to be open and it's going to be all there. I think it's all up here and he, he's going to click that back in and open it up for everybody. Things you've done in secret or you think you've done in secret, they're going to be out in the open. And that's just what, I'm, what, he's, what Jesus is saying. This is for, I'm no better than anybody else in this world except for one thing. The only difference between me and the worst man walking this face of this earth is I know Jesus Christ is my Savior and I've asked him to come live within me. There's no other difference. I'm still an imperfect human being. I still think and say things and sometimes do things that God would prefer I didn't do or say or think. Bet knew some of them, but she's not going to tell either. It's God's place to tell. If you desire and ask in earnest God through Jesus Christ's death, if we truly desire that death on the cross, he'll forgive you. He'll treat you as if you've never done those things. But here's the bombshell. Like Peter, like the disciples, like Paul, and even Jesus himself, you need to be baptized, but not just baptized by the church. You need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. I'm serious, folks. If you, don't have, if you have not got down to business and got God's Spirit living within you, you, you need to do it today. You need to do it today. That's the only way you can be what God wants you to be. That's what's wrong with the church. That's why it's not fired up, I think. I don't think we had the Spirit of God living within us anymore. As it's supposed to be. As you read through the Bible Scriptures, only when the Holy Spirit is living within can you treat others and love others and bring to them the desire to follow God that's needed. You cannot love a person the way you're supposed to love them unless you have God's Spirit living within you because you can't put them first and head of you. You put yourself first. You'll do it every time. I got $20 I could give to somebody here, but mm, I want to go out and eat tonight. I want to go out and eat. I'll give them $20 next week. <laughs> or whatever. When... when only when the Holy Spirit is living within us are you able to do what God would truly have you to do and be. Only then can you love people and treat them the same way God treats you. You just can't do it. I'm not, I don't have the ability on my own. I've told you before, I used to pray to God, God, don't let me do that anymore. God, don't let me do that anymore. Well, guess what? I kept right on doing it till I got down to business and asked God, come live within me. And guess what? I don't do that anymore. <laughs> because the desire is not there anymore. It makes a difference. God says, I like you. I want to forgive you. I love you. I want to help you. But let me come live within you. Let me live in and through you is what I'm saying. When I say let God live within me, it means you're letting Jesus Christ live in and through you. You let others see God and Jesus in you. Jesus said we are to treat others the same and love others the same as if they were perfect. And that's hard to do. John's message was blunt. He, John's, talking to the, John's talking to God's chosen people. Keep this in mind. John's talking to the church. Let's put it that way. John the Baptist is preaching to the church. That's what he's doing. The church of his day. It won't call the church. It was the Jewish religion. But it's what he's doing. He's preaching to the church. And his message, his appearance, first of all, his appearance is blunt. Dressed out down animal skin and long shaggy hair and probably a little dirty looking. 
out in the water up to his knees or up to his waist there looking around. People want to know if John's the promised earthly leader because they're looking for a king to lead them. Are you going to be the next king to start a revolution? And John says, no, my task is to prepare the way for the Messiah. And it's not to raise an army. John's preaching. It won't, what I call a rich sermon, I can tell you that. Uh, it won't settle either. He didn't, he didn't beat around the bush, try to put it in a lot of sweet, nice, ugly words. And yet great crowds came out to hear him. I reckon they wanted to hear what the man was going to have to say. And he gave them the only advice that he could give them. And that advice has stood the test of time. And John's words to the church that morning was repent. He's calling God's chosen people's people, the people of Israel. This is God's chosen people. And he's looking at them and said, you brutal vipers. You're nothing but a brutal bunch of snakes in a pit. Now I tell you what, that's pretty tough for the preacher to stand up and preach that. But that's what John's saying. He ain't he beating around the bush. He says, who warned you to flee and come out here and listen to what I had to say? Who told you to come out here and listen to me? Don't begin to say for yourselves we have Abraham. or Don't begin to say for, my, for yourself my daddy helped build his church or I belong to that church or I'm a member of this place and this organization. Don't begin to say that, John said. To, God can raise up people from this church or from that church or from this denomination or from that. I can raise up people and he can rise up people from that anytime he wants to. Just because you are Israelites, don't think you're on the way to heaven. That's what John is saying. He says, seek forgiveness and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And then go love. Because of that love, you can reach out to others. And you can be forgiven and you can forgive. Seek ye first forgiveness. You're not, you're not asked to do what you can't do. And you can't do what you've been asked to do if you do not have what you've been told you need to have. Did that make sense? <laughs> You will not grow personally in your own life, and I, I'm speaking from my own self now, until we learn that lesson. I did not move forward until I got on my knees that morning and said, Lord, if you want me, you send somebody to say something and I'm gone. I'm out of here. And the preacher walked in and said, He's told me you want he wants you. <laughs> I said, fine. I called my boss man and told him I was quitting. <laughs> what you gonna do? I'm gonna preach. You can't make enough money preaching. I'm gonna preach anyhow. <laughs> Until you surrender to him and let that spirit come live within you and then be willing to do what that spirit's leading you to do. Whether it's go visit Aunt Sue or Uncle Sam or the, the fella down the road that's never been to church, go tell him you love him, God loves him. Whether it's to call Farmwell High School and tell him, you know what, I'm disappointed you've taken the Bible out of school and you want, you want to teach children how to be good moral people, don't kill, don't murder, don't, and you take the only foundation they got right out and under them. We will not grow individually or as a group until we learn that lesson. God blesses a forgiving and loving people that are willing to share their life for Him by giving that life to others. This church when I grew up was a farming community, church. Church. 
And the one thing I remember, I don't know why Daddy brought me to the board meetings at six, seven years old, but Mark didn't bring God, but for some reason I went with Daddy most of the time. I remember sitting in this church with Mark, and he's the last of the older ones that were here at that time, I think now. Yeah. I wouldn't be here except I was about seven years old. Farming community, they had nothing. I mean, all they could do was put food on the table, and yet they would sit around in that meeting, and they would figure out how I can give this, or yeah, I, well, I, can, I reckon I can do that and give this, and I'll, I'll figure a way to do it. And give and help people, not only in the church, in the community, because they loved and wanted to help them. The one ingredient that had it won't money. I'm telling you, my daddy didn't have it. I know the rest of them didn't have it back then. Part of them didn't have $2 bills in their pocket when they were in that meeting talking. And yet they would promise, I'll, we, we, we'll get 100 to this or 200 to that or whatever. But then they did something else. They went out and visited each other. We don't visit no more. We ain't got time. We ain't got time. We got more leisure time than any people in this nation have had since I was born. And we don't have time to go see our neighbors. We don't have time to go see our fellow church members. We don't have time to go see nobody. Maybe a few family members. Must less than go visit a stranger that might, in the neighborhood that might need some help and might be struggling. <coughs> to follow Jesus and have his spirit living within you means you have to be willing to sacrifice the things that you might want to do in order to do the things that he's telling you needs to be done. <coughs> Israel had become a, a church that was ritual poor. They meet every week, they, have, they slay their lamb, they, they, they kill their sparrow, they pour the blood on the altar, they ask the priest to forgive them, he sprinkles the blood around and he says the prayer on them and they go back home. <laughs> That's it. See you next Sabbath day that I'm supposed to be here. The lame are walking around unclean. The poor are walking around. Nobody will feed them or give them nothing. Unclean, don't touch me. We don't have nothing to do with them. They don't go to church. They don't come to the temple. Nah. They unclean. Samaritan, <coughs> nasty people. They don't worship God in the temple. They worship God on that mountain, honey. You can't worship God on that mountain. You have to come to the temple. They literally spit when they said the name Samaritan. It was a dirty word to them. John said, you brood of vipers, you snakes. Israel had become a, a ritual church. And John said, let me tell you, Jesus is come and the axe is already laid to the root of the tree. The axe is already laid to the root of the temple. John said, Jesus has come and he's already laid the axe to the root. Every tree, every person, every church that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now you can imagine if you're Israelite sitting down on the bank and John's telling you, yeah, Jesus is coming, but he's coming to destroy it. He's coming to destroy the religion. And he did. 70 AD, the temple was totally destroyed. Burned, tore down, not a, not a block standing. Israel today cannot worship God the way they were told to worship Him in the Old Scripture, Testament Scriptures, even though they keep trying. There's no way. There's no altar. There's no blood sacrifices anymore. It's impossible. They're harsh words, but they're, they, they're important words for you and me today, for the church today, for individuals today. Someone said that a sign of insanity is to keep doing things the way you've always done them. If you're insane, if you keep doing things the way you always done, then something's wrong. If you want to improve your life, then you have to change your ways. You have to change your words. You have to change your thinking. You have to let Jesus come in and let Jesus live in your life the way he would live. You have to do the things that Jesus would do. 
when you see somebody, what, what, did, uh, what did young people used to do and they, they didn't hold water long, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do for this person or that person? What would Jesus say for this person or that person? Would Jesus go visit that person? Would he go talk to that person? Would he go maybe give them a few dollars or food? Or what, what would he do? A famous poet, Herman Hess, said, There's magic in new beginnings. There's magic in new beginnings. Sad thing is most of us don't wear, are not aware we need a new beginning. We think we're fine where we're at. We don't realize we need to change. We need to turn over a new leaf. We need to do something different. We don't need a new beginning. There's magic in new beginnings. That wonderful song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, Saved a Wretch Like Me, when you really come to it, it's a beautiful song. <clears throat> so many churches want a revival, and I agree. I spoke to Joe. We have an open board meeting. The board decides what this church does. You need to be at the next board meeting. Be nice if the whole church would show up. This church has an open board meeting. We're not a big church. We don't have an established board meeting. We're not big enough to have all these little committees. So if you want a revival, come to the next board meeting. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. No one person, especially the preacher, can't, can't call it and can't say you're going to have it. I don't have that authority in a Methodist church. Wouldn't do no good anyway. It's got to be what you want. It's got to be what you want. The great evangelist Gypsy Lee, if you've done any of his readings, if you've read anything on him, you probably hadn't, but if you have, one thing Duke does is make you read, <laughs> whether you want to or not. He was asked to ha uh, how to have a revival. And this is what he said. Stand still, take a piece of chalk, and draw a circle around your feet. And when you have a revival inside that circle, then you can have a revival. Do you understand? And until you can do that, there's no revival. Believe me, if one person could do it, I would preach one at this church this Sunday and I wouldn't be here next Sunday. I'd go to every church to let me in the door if I could give them a revival. If I could revive them. When I left this church, I'm not saying it, it did any good or not. We had a group of men met in that Sunday school and for Sunday school every Sunday praying for every member of this church. Everybody was on the membership roll whether they come or not. You've got to have God's Spirit living within you. You've got to do what Jesus would do. Without that Spirit personally living within you and, 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 and you can have that Spirit and have it stifled and chained and locked up. Un unlock it if it's in there. Take the chains off if you've got Spirit of God living and let Him loose. Let Him guide your life. When you pay somebody and say, oh, stop there. No, I ain't got time with that first thought is, is I ought to stop there. Maybe that's God telling you, you ought to stop there. Or I ought to go there. Or I ought to do this. And then you override it and push it back down. I've done that before, so don't say you don't do it. I don't think I'm strange and different. And then I, a few days later, Lord, I wish I had gone by there and stopped and said something to that person. We're stifling the Spirit of God. John's message was pray until the Holy Spirit comes within you. Get, get in a room to yourself. Shut the door. Get on your knees and pray until the Spirit of God comes. If you're sincere and want it, it will come. It might be just a flicker at first, but it'll come. And if you'll, then if you'll fuel that flicker, 
If you'll pour some gasoline on it by getting out and doing what, it'll, it'll grow. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God by seeking forgiveness, baptize, and then he said, seek and allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you, God's Spirit to come within you. You have to seek first the kingdom of God, seek forgiveness, baptize, become a member of the church, and then seek God's Holy Spirit to come upon you. This is what Jesus did. He baptized and the Holy Spirit come upon him. That doesn't mean he won't God's son. It's just, it's, he's just telling this is the way we should proceed. He set the example for you and me. John was a persuasive preacher. What did John say? You got two coats? Give one of them to somebody who ain't got one. You got two sandwiches? Give somebody one of those sandwiches that ain't got it. Cut the television off and go visit somebody. They'll, they'll probably pass out when they see you at the door or, 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 or stutter. You might better call and tell them you're coming in advance so they, if it's at night so they ain't got the bed clothes on, laying back watching television. But that's what it takes, folks. It takes prayer. It takes wanting. It takes seeking. It takes letting God then rule your life, rule what you do. In business, be fair with your dealings. Don't take what's not yours. Come and be baptized and seek the Holy Spirit. In other words, the repentance John preached was not simply about personal indiscretions and vices. He was concerned with our relationship with others. You cannot have that relationship unless you truly have Jesus Christ living within you. Oh, you can have some semblance of it, but you can't have it unless you have God, that Spirit living within you. It won't happen. The disciples, upper room, they did what? They stayed there and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed until that Holy Spirit come upon them. Whatever it takes. Peter, John, Paul, they go to others. I've been baptized, I know this, but I don't, they haven't yet received the Holy Spirit. They haven't let the Spirit of God come and live within You see, sins are not just personal indiscretions, folks. You're not just going to be judged on the sins that are in your life. You're going to be judged on what you have and have not done to others. You're going to be judged on what you have and have not done to and for others that you've had the opportunity to do. And not doing. Now you think about that. You want to grow? You can do it. Each, each one of you's decision out there. But if you sit back and do nothing in your life or in the life of the church. I guarantee you God's going to do nothing until the judgment day. And it's going to be too late. You sit back and do nothing. I guarantee you God will do nothing. I told you and I tell you again, there were things in my life I wanted to remove. I prayed earnestly and seriously as I listened to BBN to take them out. He did not take them out of my life for Claude Nethercutt decided that I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to go on a different road. And they're gone. Haven't done some of those things in 40 years. <laughs> Jesus said, John said, listen. I baptize you with water. One comes after me whose thongs, his shoelace, I'm not worthy to sit down and untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John said, come and be baptized and then seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Speaking of Jesus, come and live within you. It's possible today. And I guarantee if you do that, things will change in your life and great things can happen. 
but not until that happens. Jesus, there's a void in every life. There is a void. I can tell you, if you don't have Jesus in your life, there's a void in that life. And the only thing that can fill that void is God's Holy Spirit. Nothing else. Amen. We're located just off Highway 264 between Farmville and Greenville, exit 66 on Wesley Church Road. Sunday school's at 945. Church is at 11. You can call me if you wish at 252-749-5101. All are welcome. The altar is open as we sing our closing hymn, Oh How I Love Jesus, 170. 170 as we stand and sing. <laughs> Holy Spirit and church first. You can't put that down until you get God's Holy Spirit living within you. You begin to put His work ahead of what you want. Bob, dismiss us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to come to your house in Christian love and worship you in fellowship, song, and praise. We thank you for all the members of our church family. And we ask that you bless all our members, both those present and those absent. We thank you for the pastor and for the powerful message about the Holy Spirit that he has shared with us today. Lord, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we ask that you help us to accept it and let your Holy Spirit live within us each and every day. Go with us now as we prepare to depart your house and protect us from the arrow that flies by night until here again we assemble. Thank you, Lord. This we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.